Greetings, everyone. I'm going to talk with you in this video. And I'm going to tell you the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help your God. That's what they say when you go to court. My journey on YouTube started maybe four years now. My first video I posted on this channel was talking about my experience with racism and how hurt I was about an experience I had at my job. It was my truth. It was after being depressed for a year, after feeling hurt and disillusioned, I came on here and I started talking about my experience. And during, during that time, there was a lot of racism towards black people in the United States of America. A lot of things were happening. And so I started talking about those topics. I started doing my research and start going back in history, pulling back from what I learned in school and sharing some of that. YouTube has been a blessing in one regard, but my presence on YouTube have cost me dearly. I have lost a lot from coming out and sharing my truth. And you know, one of the worst things is when you can't seem to put your finger on it. All these random things start happening and you can't put your finger on it. At first, one of the first things is I couldn't live anywhere. You know, I'd be there for a short period of time and all of a sudden I'd get notice that I had to go. Some random story would come up and it wasn't happening. I moved five times in six years. And all these things, you know, at one point I was beginning, it felt like witchcraft. But one of the things that gave it away was my YouTube channel itself, how it was suppressed, how individuals would say that they're subscribed to my channel. And when they go back, they would find that they're unsubscribed. Individuals would say, I put notification on and the notification was turned off. And my views never really took off. The only time my view started growing was when I would talk on the Jamaican topic. And that's because it's a topic that's researched or people are looking for that topic. So my videos would emerge. But I want to say to folks who are starting a new channel, unless this is something personal, it was very personal for me. Unless it's something personal, then don't talk on the controversial topics. Don't talk about your feelings. Don't talk about how um, racism affects your life because as far as I'm concerned, you will never grow on YouTube talking about those topics, those controversial topics. You know, we are told come out here and use our freedom of speech, but freedom of speech is only for some people. It's not for black persons. And if you're gonna do freedom of speech, it must be the type of freedom of speech where you're swearing, where as a black woman, you show your vagina, where as a black woman, you're cursing each other, you're being disgraceful. You are sure to get promoted. If you're dunce and you have a YouTube channel, just be dunce or at least pretend to be dunce. And you're, as a black person, your channel will do very well. So for example, I remember watching this woman. She had millions of subscribers. And what she used to do is pour like cereal in a bathtub with milk and get in there and eat it like that. I think she was invited to the White House for doing that. My life was a living nightmare. So many things were happening. It became too much to be a coincidence. So telling your truth and coming on social media and educating people about good health, about self-love, about all those things. I'm, I'm sorry. That's not what's promoted. And, you know, being threatened for the channel to be shut down, I expect it to be eventually. This is why I give folks my contact information if that ever happens. And I have built a following. I've built some individuals who I've connected with and have connected with me. But... Whoa, I hide my subscriber count because I didn't want folks to be lured by it or to be put off by it. 
and I've seen channels where literally this young lady cannot read. If she reads one line, if she reads one line, she will not get two words right. And she has far more subscribers than myself. I'm not jealous of these individuals because I didn't come here to get a great following. I came to tell my truth. And I also believe in the old idea that if you're selling oranges, don't watch the man who's selling his bananas. Eventually, your oranges are going to be uh, accepted, are going to be sought after. So that's why I keep doing it. There are many times that I felt like quitting because I felt that I had nothing to offer. Sometimes I would think, what the hell is this? You do want to know that your message is resonating. And so many times when I felt like quitting, somehow the universe would send a message to someone to send me a message to say, continue, you have blessed me. And even just one, even just one person really got me to carry on. And it's happened many times, many times. Apu, I have a special love for him because this young man um, joined me a long time ago. And many times when I would say, I'm never going back on here, out of the blue, he would send a message, where are you, Jenny? And it would motivate me to come back to say, wow, there's someone else that misses me. I, I'm moved to share my story this morning. I'm moved to say this. Because a lot of it was very hurtful. And it taught me one thing. The powers that be in this world are always at work. Suppressing, unoppressing, and silencing folks. Even though you get the big smiles and the big hugs and the fake idea that we can come out here and live our best lives and come out here and tell the truth. Nothing is far from the truth but that. But here it is. Here's the one thing why I continue. Not because I'm big and bad. Not because I don't have reasons that folks could use this against me and put it and thump me in my head with it. But because I believe in the universe. That the power, the greatest power in the world is not held by men, but is held by nature. And whatever you're called to do, man might hate you, man might suppress you, Man might put obstacles in the way for you to fall, but the universe is the one that ultimately makes our destiny and rights, I should say, our destiny. And even those who wield power in this world, uh, they're subjected to destiny as well. So I carry on. If you're looking for fame, if you're looking for support, Make sure that you speak the language of the masters and you tell your truth when they tell you to tell your truth and you speak the way they guide you to speak. Otherwise, it's not easy for you. Sometimes I'm afraid. But sometimes something in me comes out, jumps, jumps out, rushes out and I just speak. But it's been difficult. These videos that I've made for you had come at great risk to myself, to my well-being. And I see that no matter how you run off your mouth and talk and act like you're powerful or, you know, you want to tell your truth and you want to rally the troops, rally the people to empower them. Please give me a break. Empower them where? How? Hmm? When you, as a, a black person, has no true power. If you look in every area where people are growing from other culture, you, the presence of black folks are almost invisible. Is it our fault? Is it other people's fault? You know, half and half. But we can't get together. We can't take these positions of, positions of power because we don't know unity in numbers or strength. So you'll always be answering to other folks. You'll always be afraid of other people because the one thing other folks have learned, we haven't. And it's to understand that you have to build with each other 
as you live with other persons, you create a, a market, a network um, of friends and position yourself in every area, in law, in science, in music, in business, in real estate, in finance, all the areas where other folks have put themselves and throw or lend their support behind each other. We fail in those areas. And so we'll have to continue playing the clown and being afraid to speak. But I fear, not man. You know, the physical part of me fears man because I know all these powerful people in the world, they came out and tried it and it didn't end so well for them. So Marcus Garvey, you know, did his thing, said his, he made his speech and he got deported to Jamaica. And, you know, you see all the other stories of other persons who have come out and tried it. You see the whole story surrounding that fellow who passed away, who someone killed in the United States. I don't know if any of what they're saying is true or if it's conscious conspiracy theory. But most black people will say, what's the point? I just want to live my life. I don't want to fight for any cause. And the truth is, the way black people behave, it's difficult for anyone to take up their cause. Because they're the same ones that will take you, surround you and grab you and tie you up and drag you to the ones who put you to your death. So I don't speak out for black people. I speak out for myself. And I primarily like to reach out to the young people, you know, because we fail them in many ways. I find solace and comfort with these little ones. I love them. They love me. And when I go through the deepest, darkest oppression and depression, they just give me balance. It's a very lonely life. It's difficult to be a high achiever and to go out in pursuit of success and find a lot of roadblocks and oftentimes feeling like I'm being punished because I dare to speak. But I am blessed. I stay blessed. I'm guided. You know, there's a Psalms that I like. It's a poem as far as I'm concerned. I say it all the time. I stay blessed. And even prosecution is something that builds our character, that strengthens us. Stay blessed, everyone.